Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today, we are going to go over how to create inspection report cover letters. So this is something that a lot of you have been asking about, right? Adding something to the front of those inspection reports, whether it references deficiencies or not references deficiencies, um, references the specifics of an inspection, or is more or less just a generic cover letter that you'd like attached to an inspection. So this is a newer feature that is available. Um, and so what better time than to talk about it than now, right? So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Jennifer Doyle. I will be guiding you through today's uh, overview of this feature. And I'm a co-founder and the vice president of customer success and support here at InspectPoint. Um, so this is a quicker webinar, um, especially because we're focusing on such a, on a, a, a very specific feature um, and in relation to the inspection reports. So before we jump into it, what we're gonna cover today is how do you create those cover letters, right? What are the options available to you? Where do you go to create them? You know, how do you add a certificate if desired, right? We have the option for you to attach a certificate, but not everyone uses it, but it's available, so I'll show you how to do it. Um, and then of course, right, I'm gonna go over how you create this thing, and then, well, what does it look like? So I'm gonna show you what that final product looks like. So like I said, this one's gonna be a quick one. So we're just gonna jump right into the product. And I am going to start here on the home screen. Now to get to where you have to do this, where you create your, your cover letters, you're gonna to go to the upper right hand corner of your screen, drop down to inspection settings and tap report settings. This is where you will create the cover letter. So once again, from this home screen or on any screen in the upper right hand corner, go ahead and click that drop down and find inspection settings and then go ahead and click report settings. Now I have gone ahead and set up a couple of the cover letters, but I will definitely walk you through what I did and it on creating them. So really quickly, um, before I kind of get into it, by default, you have the option to create just a, a template cover letter. This option here can be the very, very generic one, right? You could have it just say, you know, thank you for your business, you know, attaches your inspection report. Maybe you have some terms and terms of service you need to throw in there, but Overall, very generic, not referencing any specifics of the inspection, you can plop that in here. Or what you can do, which is what I have up on the screen, is make a non-deficiency cover letter. So what I mean by that is you've created that inspection, right? Everything is good. I like to refer to this as the all good cover letter. So, um, you know, I've created and, and drafted up some stuff. I'll get into the specifics of some of those replacement tokens you're seeing in there, how they work and all that in just a second. But I've got my all good cover letter. Now, we all know that in a perfect world, everything would be great, right? There'd be no deficiencies um, and, and everything would just be great. But then again, though, you know, deficiencies lead for to revenue at the same time. And they're in us basically in unnecessary evil at times. So at the same time, while you've got your all good cover letter up top, you also have to be able to display when a report fails and has deficiencies. So if I am creating a cover letter that says all good, I also need to create a cover letter that says it's not all good. So I have the option to do so below. So like I mentioned, you have the option to create a very generic one, not even worry about breaking out into deficiencies, no deficiencies, et cetera. Or I have the option to say all good and then create a not all good cover letter. I'm gonna go real quick into this area here, here, just the, the, the good cover letter, just to kind of talk about a couple of the items that I have in here when I'm creating it up. So a first, general recommendation is is that you always place your company information in the upper left hand corner this just takes into account sort of the spacing at the top of it and also allows for us to display your company logo up here in the upper right hand corner so you're not going to see this that that logo display on this screen but when you generate the report 
We are going to take whatever logo you have loaded in your account settings area and place it in the upper right hand corner of the screen. By placing your company information over here, it also just kind of creates more of that cover letter feel, right? Your, your company information is prominent in the upper left hand corner and over to the right, properly spaced will be your, your logo. Now from there, there's these options you might see here in these brackets. These are what I refer to as the replacement tokens. So these are items that we're able to take from the inspection and from your instance to pre-fill in for you on here. So basically, you're not hand typing up a cover letter every single time you know, you're generating an inspection report. Um, if you place report date on there, then we're going to display the date that this report was generated. Um, if you're adding your building information, right, instead of hand typing the building address every single time, we're gonna display the building address on where this took place for you. If you have a building contact on here, we're gonna display this for you. Now, you don't have to use all these replacement tokens that I am pointing out. Um, I have all of them listed on here just to show you all the ones that are available to you to use and how they'll sort of display on the reports um, for you. Um, so if I have that building contact, like I said, you can put that on there. If you don't want the building contact's name on there, the building contact, just do, you don't use that token. Um, um, subject, in mine, I'm, I'm being a little bit more, more formal with the subject in here. Um, and then I'm also displaying work order number. So once again, if this is an item that you don't typically use, like you're not using a work order number on your inspection, probably not the best replacement token to put in here. I'm then putting a little bit of text, right? That text is gonna remain no matter what. And then I'm putting another replacement token in here that says the inspection date. So when did the inspection take place? so that when I generate this cover letter, uh, my customer knows what inspection I'm referring to. Because this is the all good report, um, I'm listing that when, this, when tested, the systems were operating correctly. Then I'm also adding this item here, this replacement token, that is the report contents. Because you are generating this from inside of InspectPoint, we know what was part of your inspection. Right, so we're able to display um, what's what's part of it. <laughs> you know what what was part of it and why why it it, it passed. So we're going to list everything on here on the inspection, um, so that it, it'll list you know your your system name, your asset, whatever it might be. It will appear here on your report for your customer to know. I'm sorry, in the cover letter for your customer to know. In here, I also have additional information. Um, and this little area here, I just like to point out that this is currently not pulling from the inspection series area. So the list of the next inspection date, essentially what that next inspection date is doing is looking at the frequency of the inspection report that they just gen that you're generating and the month it took place. And let's just say it's an annual that took place in June. It's going to say, in this case, the next inspection is due June 2022. So just to keep that in mind of the next inspection date, what that's taking into account is the scenario I just described, not the um, inspection um, series date that's, that's upcoming. Lastly, you have the option to include this replacement token, which is the signature. Now, the signature is not you know, what's appearing here. Like this technically is a signature. What we mean by throwing in this replacement token is you have the option down here to add what would kind of look like a wet signature for your, your cover letter. Um, so if you wanted to have a legit signature on there, um, you can upload an image of that, um, put this replacement token in here that says signature um, and it would appear there for you. Now, one thing that I did mention was this certificate. Um, so now if there is, if you wanted to display a certificate to the customer, um, we have the option for you to select to have one that we have built in there. It's very basic, um, nothing super, <laughs> super special. Don't, we do not have the ability for you to upload your own certificate right now, but some people like to add certificates and 
this is an option and it would only display um, if there was no deficiencies on a report, right? Because you would not give a certificate if, every, if something failed. Um, in this case, I am not going to include certificate. I really just want to include the cover letter, whether it passed or it failed, or, um, and then follow with the inspection report. Um, my personal on this one was as I wasn't going to send it as additional pages and, and may confuse my customer. Um, so I am going to leave that off. So at this point in time, I have created my cover letters and I now want them to generate. So I need to make sure that I include this, this checkbox that says include cover letter. Now by checking that checkbox, whether you've just set up one of your cover letters or you've set up a non-deficient and deficient cover letter, every time we generate a report now, this cover letter is gonna generate. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's kind of an all across the board setting. It doesn't happen per building. So when you are setting up your cover letters, it's something you're gonna to wanna to think about. Do you wanna go with a very generic cover letter that does not mention deficiencies? Or do you wanna get into the more specific one of, we've got this report doesn't have deficiencies and this one does. So just something to keep in mind. I like to point that out. Um, it's kind of an all across the board type thing. So now that I've included the cover letter, I've built out the cover letter. And just one other thing to note is, is I have the ability to kind of make some, you know, edits to it. If I want something to be bolded, I can come in here and I can bold it, right? Like that's gonna be bold. I can make things italic. You can play with the way things are gonna display. You know, maybe I wanted this to be italicized. I can do that. Once I'm done though, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to click update. This is going to save everything that I have just done. Now, once I'm done setting up my cover letter, I can start generating up reports. So I'm actually just gonna go over to this inspection reports area here, and I'm gonna generate two inspection reports. Now, here is one that has deficiencies on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna generate that report to kind of show us what the report's gonna look, the report will look like with a cover letter that contains deficiencies. And I have another inspection in here that does not contain deficiencies. So I'm going to generate this one so we have an idea of what those reports will look like um, with the cover letter that is showing um, that everything is all good. So I'm going to come over to the inspection reports tab and we'll refresh up those inspections. And I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to grab very quickly here this resurrection hospital one, the one that has everything is all good. So based on the setup that I, I took and the replacement tokens that I used, this is how my, um, my cover letter is going to look on this inspection report. So like I mentioned, by having my address in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, I see my logo appear kind of nicely over on that right-hand side. I've generated the report today, so I'm showing the, the report date, I'm showing the address information, and here I'm showing attention, but I don't have a building contact. So this might be a replacement token that I may not want to use because I don't have a building contact on here that's displaying. I have my subject on here, but once again, I'm seeing another field that I'm not utilizing. So might be something I wanna think about, probably not a replacement token I wanna use if I'm not putting a work order number on here. I see my, my information spelled out here and then listing when the inspection took place. Um, based on that replacement token, it's taking the date that the inspection was submitted back. It's mentioning that everything on here operated satisfactory and that the um, report contains the fire pump room riser. So if I had more than one item on here, it would list everything on here that passed. Once again, I did have that inspection date. And as you will see, this inspection was an annual inspection that was done in April. So it's showing that the next inspection due is April, 2022. So once again, if it's something that you don't necessarily want that type of style of date, date sort of placing on there to reflect, you can always turn that off. And then because I've enabled the signature, that wet signature icon is appearing here as well. 
and um, it follows the report, it follows right afterwards. So in true fashion, you've got your cover letter, short, sweet, to the point, gives the details they need, and into the report. Now if I come back to that reports page here, and I go to the report where something failed, um, uh, I am going to see, let me just grab that one very quickly, that, um, oh, I actually grabbed the wrong one that had something that those were resolved deficiencies on it. Um, so if I had something that did fail, let me grab this one. Um, where did that report go of the item that failed? There we go. We have live action here. Can't find the report I generated. <laughs> so um, in this case, I'm seeing an inspection here, um, an inspection report with a cover letter that is showing deficiencies, right? So I still have the same replacement tokens up at the top, displaying the date, all of that. Once again, don't have an intention to, don't have a work order number, so may want to remove the inspection was done on July 15th, but I'm also seeing that the following systems were left with deficiencies. So it's listing then the systems that have the deficiencies on it um, and kind of making that note. Now, if I had the certificate turned on, this report would not have a certificate on it because I am not, you know, it, it failed. Um, there's deficiencies, so there'd be no certificate. Um, so here I am, um, once again, seeing that date and the wet signature there. Now, I have worked with customers who have used this cover letter function. Um, they've they've asked, you know, and said, hey, you know, listen, my insurance company says I need to list like terms of service on all my reports. They actually utilized their cover letter and this cover letter function to kind of add those terms of service. You know, it was, you know, hey, you know, just so you know, here's your inspection report, but here's the terms of service that we've all agreed upon. Um, and they, they sort of adjusted it and it, it looks it looks quite nice with the terms of service as a cover letter. Um, so as I've mentioned a couple of times, you can do deficient versus non-deficient cover letters or have a very generic cover letter or even utilize it in the way that um, I just mentioned with those terms of service um, per, per the um, insurance company on there. Um, we try to create this this feature in a way that it's really flexible so that it can be utilized however best fits your business business needs. So that is how you um, create a cover letter and you know how it ends up looking at the end of it. Um, so like I did say, it was gonna be on the quicker side for the webinar, um, but of course, if any questions come up, um, you can always feel free to reach out to our support team, support at inspectpoint.com. You can also reach out to me at jennifer at inspectpoint.com. Um, just one thing to note though about this feature is, is this does not require anyone on the support side or the inspect point side to enable anything for you. So because it has to do with inspections and inspections as part of our baseline, you know, baseline product, it's in that reports setting. There's no additional fee to add this this function. Um, there's no enablement that needs to take place. But of course, though, if you wander up into settings, you click report settings, and then you're just lost, or you want us to take a look at it, or you're just a little confused on anything, that is what we are here for. We are here to help you make sure that this cover letter function, if it's something that you're looking to, um, works for you. Um, so once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this today. If there are any questions, please reach out to us at support at inspectpoint.com and have a great rest of your day.